guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today we're going to be doing a hike themed book haul. This is a massive book haul that I have been collecting books for since last year's hike and if you're not familiar, hike is my kind of fitness, nature, spring-themed read-a-thon. I will link the announcement video down below as well as all of the information. This read-a-thon is going to be running Monday, May 13th through Monday, May 27th, so through Memorial Day. This year we're doing reading badges for the challenges. There are 12 reading badges and 6 physical badges. Again, you can pick and choose these as you want. We're kind of doing it like Girl Scout themed and there are a bunch of different options like books with a mountain on the cover or a bird on the cover, survival reads, books set at camp, books set outside, and so these books all encompass one or more of those reading challenges. I have really fun graphics that have all the badges and everything. Make sure to check out everything down below because there is so many fun links and things that make the readathon really interactive. So we're gonna dive into these books. This is such a large haul because there are so many different options for a hike which I really love. This has become, I think, my favorite readathon. It's the most unique. It's so much fun to take photos and everything. So we're not going to go over too many descriptions of these books because I have so many. And obviously, I'm not going to be reading all of these books during the readathon, but I always like to keep things on hand so I can change if things aren't working for me, if I have different moods and all of that stuff. I get most of my books at used bookstores, thrift books. Now I'm invested in Pango. So most of my books I get between $1 to $5. That's why this haul is so large and also because I've been saving for a year. So we're going to dive right in. All right, so Wilderness of Stars by Shane Earnshaw. This one I am very excited to get to. I'm definitely getting to it for the readathon. I had mixed feelings on The Wicked Deep by Shane Earnshaw, but I really liked Winterwood. It's one of my favorite books ever. So I'm excited to try this one and one other one from her that you'll see in a minute. So Vega has lived in the valley her whole life, forbidden by her mother to leave the safety of its borders because of the unknown threats waiting for her in the wild. But when Vega sees an omen in the sky, one she cannot ignore, she is forced to leave the protective boundaries of the valley. Yet the outside world is much more terrifying than Vega could have ever imagined. People are gravely sick and they lose their eyesight and their hearing just before they lose their lives. Vega has a secret though. She is the last astronomer, a title carried from the generation to generation, and she's the only one who understands the knowledge of the stars. So a little bit of a survival read, definitely set in nature, and we've got like that cool astronomer element as well, so this one sounds amazing. Seasonal Fears by Shana McGuire. One of the reading badges is a seasonal read, so this can be a interpreted however you want. I want a book that has to do with the seasons or is set in one particular season. I also really love Shannon McGuire. In this one, Melanie has a destiny, though it isn't the one everyone assumes it to be. She's delicate, she's fragile, and she's dying. Now truly is the winter of her soul. Harry doesn't want to believe in destiny because that means accepting the loss of the one person that gives his life meaning. So when a new road is laid out in front of them, a road that will lead through an untold danger towards a possible lifetime together, walking down it seems like it will be the only option. But other are following behind with violence in their hearts and it looks like destiny has a plan for them. So kind of a loose description but I trust Shana McGuire so I'm excited to try it out. Okay so this one I did include in my randomathon food haul and I may have already read it at this point but I wanted to put it in here as well because it will work for the set at camp challenge. So that is Eat Your Heart Out by Kelly Davos. This one basically is set at a fat camp that gets attacked by zombies. Our main character Vivian and she is sent to fat camp by her parents. She is really against being there and then things start to go down and people start to die off and act really strange. It's supposed to be wild and fun. I really love Go Hunt Me by Kelly Davos so I thought this would be a perfect one for the readathon in that set at camp challenge. Earthbound by April Lynn Pike. So Tavia is the sole survivor of a plane crash that killed her parents. When she starts to see strange visions of a boy she's never spoken with in real life she begins to suspect that there's much about her past that she hasn't been told. So we have like a cool survival element in here plus there's earth in the title so sounds good. We have a graphic novel called Camp and I don't know anything about this except that it's middle grade and it's set at camp and it's a graphic novel. So it looks cute. The Lovely and the Lost by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I've heard so many good things about Jennifer but I haven't read one of her books and this one sounded perfect and look it has little like boot prints and paw prints on the uh, in pages. So Kira Bennett's earliest memory are of living alone and wild in the woods. She has no idea how long she was on her own or what she had to do to survive but she remembers the moment Katie Bennett and one of her search and rescue dogs found her. Adopted into the Bennett family, Kira struggles with human interaction years later, but she excels at the family business, Search and Rescue. Together with Katie's son Jude and their neighbor, Free, Kira works alongside Katie to train the world's most elite search and rescue dog. Someday, all three teenagers hope to put their skills to use finding the lost and bringing them home. <sighs> 
I mean, it sounds amazing. And I think this is part of a series. No Beauties or Monsters by Tara Golden Jen. This cover is incredible. So something is wrong in 29 Palms. Riley hasn't been back to the U.S. military base in 29 Palms since her father died. She left a lot of memories out there buried in the sand of the Mojave Desert. Memories of her dad, her old friends Nathan and Lily, and most of all her enigmatic grandfather who cut ties with Riley's family before he passed away. But her mom's new work assignment has sent them to 29 Palms again and now Riley is in the one place she never wanted to return to. But there are whispers around town of a mysterious killer on the loose. And it isn't just 29 Palms that feels frightening. There's something wrong with Riley. She's seeing things she can't explain. Visions of monstrous creatures that stalk the night. Sounds absolutely amazing and perfect for the readathon. This is one I meant to read last year and I didn't get to it, but Wranglestone by Darren Charlton. On the islands of Wranglestone, there is a safe haven in a world filled with the restless dead, but as the lake freezes over, there's nothing to stop them from crossing the ice. Kind of like a Western vibe where like post-apocalyptic with zombies and this camp is set up where they're protected by this lake, but the lake is going to freeze over and the zombies are going to be able to get to them. Going to try to escape. I believe there is also a cute little male-male romance in here and and it sounds really, really great, and I love the cover. We have Willa of the Wood by Robert Beatty. Willa is a young night spirit of the Great Smoky Mountains, and she is her clan's best thief. She creeps into the homes of day folk under cover of darkness and takes what they won't miss. It's dangerous work, and the day folk kill whatever they do not understand, but Willa would do anything to win the approval of the Pateron, the charismatic leader of the Ferrum people. So I think she's like a fairy, and it sounds really, really fun. We have Outrun the Moon by Stacy Lee. This is set in San Francisco in 19 and 15 year old Mercy Wong is determined to break from the poverty of Chinatown and an education at St. Clair's School for Girls is her best hope. Although St. Clair's is off limits to all but the wealthiest white girls, Mercy gains admittance through a mix of cunning and a little bribery only to discover that getting in was the easiest part, not to be undone by a bunch of spoiled heiresses. On April 18th, a historic earthquake rocks San Francisco, destroying Mercy's home and school and now she is forced to wait with her classmates for their families in a temporary park encampment. So we have kind of like a survival slash set at a camp situation in here and it sounds really really good. Really excited about this one and cannot believe that I hadn't heard of it yet but we have Stranded. Look at this muddy boot on the cover by Melinda Braun and in this one it's human nature to survive searching for some kind of peace after the tragic death of her younger sister. Emma ventures with a hiking group into the massive and treacherous wilderness of the Boundary Waters. A rugged land filled with wild animals and twisting rivers and Emma hopes that she finds the quiet solitude she so desperately needs but Mother Nature has other plans. When a freak windstorm kills the group's guide, Emma and their three survivors are left stranded with no compass, no map, and just a handful of supplies. So, sounds really great. The Lake House by Sarah Beth Durst, who I'm coming to really love Sarah Beth Durst. I've heard great things about this one. I believe this is like a spooky kind of survivor thriller. So Claire's grown up cycling through every worst case scenario, triple checking locks, counting her steps, and second guessing her decision. It's just how she's wired. The worst case scenario never actually comes true. Until she arrives at the off-grid summer camp her parents sent her to only to find a black and burned husk where a lodge should be and no survivors. Claire and the other two late arrivals raise Ava and Mariana are the only ones left with no cell phone service, no electricity, no shelter, and no way back to civilization. So we're set at camp also. Sounds amazing. The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold. This cover, I mean, it's so cool. It's got a really cool in pages also. A deadly fly flu sweeps the globe. It leaves a shell of the world that once was. Among the survivors are 18 year old Nico and her dog. On a voyage devised by Nico's father, find a mythical portal, a young artist named Kit raised in an old abandoned cinema, and the enigmatic deliverer who lives life after life in an attempt to put the world back together. As swarms of infected flies roam the earth, these few survivors navigate the woods of a post apocalyptic. New England, meeting others along the way, each one on their own quest to find the life and love in a world gone dark. I mean, sounds good. They're like on a journey. It's survivor-esque. Oh, great. The Undead Truth of Us. This is another flowers on the cover. So we have 16 year old Zahiri Young and she's absolutely certain her mother morphed into a zombie before her untimely death. She can't seem to figure out why. So we have like a zombie situation in here which I feel like has a survival element as well. Next we have some graphic novels that I actually found at my little free library and they're called Explorer 
and there's the mystery box the Lost Islands and the Hidden Doors. And I literally think they're like explorer, treasure hunter type graphic novels and they look really good. Wildfire by Rodman Philbrecht. Again, this is just like a wildfire survival situation. I believe this one's middle grade. A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw. This is an adult novel. And in this one, we're following Travis who has an unusual talent for locating missing people. Hired by families as a last resort, he requires only a single object to find the person who has vanished. When he takes on the case of Maggie St. James, a well-known author of dark macabre children's books, he's led to a place many believe to be only a legend. Known as Pastoral, this reclusive community was founded by like-minded people searching for a simpler way of life. As soon as he stumbles upon it, he disappears, just like Maggie St. James. So... It sounds amazing. Empress of All Seasons by Amiko Jean. Again, this is gonna be good for that like seasonal category. This one sounds so awesome. So in the Palace of Illusions, nothing is what it seems. Each generation, a competition is held to find the next Empress of Hanoku. The rules are simple. Survive the palace's enchanted seasonal rooms, conquer winter, spring, summer, and fall, and marry the prince. All are eligible to compete, all except yokai, supernatural monsters, and spirits whom the human emperor is determined to enslave and destroy. Amazing. We have the Lost Coast by Amy Rose Capetta. I kind of want to reread this one. I remember it being like a three star for me when I read it. It's so beautiful that I wanted to try it again because I may just have been in the wrong mood. Danny did not know what she was looking for when her mother spread out a map of the United States and Danny put her finger down on Tempest, California. What she finds are the Greys, a group of friends who throw around terms like queer and witch like they're ordinary and everyday, though they feel like an earthquake to Danny. But Danny didn't just find the Greys. They cast a spell that called her halfway across the country because she has something that they need. She can bring back Imogen, the most powerful of the greys, missing since the summer night she wandered into the woods alone. So we have a really cool like woodsy setting in here that I remember. I don't remember exactly what I didn't love about it, but I'm gonna try it again. Vitro by Jessica Quarry. This is second in a series after Origin, which I think has been on my Hikathon TBR for like three years now. And that's about kind of like an AI robot girl that like gets loose in the woods. I could be totally wrong about this, but this is the second book. I think it's set on an island. Sounds amazing. Okay, Seasons of Chaos. I believe this is second to Seasons of the Storm, which again is like another season-themed book. I don't really remember much about it. I don't want to read it because this is the second book but look into it because it sounds really good and it will work for that seasonal category. Storm of Locusts by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is the second or third book after the Trail of Lightning, which is like a survival, monster survival book that has been on my Hikathon TBR for a couple years as well. This whole series sounds great. Then I got Shadow Lark and Lark Ascending. These are from Megan Spooner. First book being Skylark, which I already had, but the synopsis for this one is, for 15 years, Lark Ainsley waited for the day that her resources would be harvested and she would finally be an adult. After the harvest, she expects a small role in the regularly orderly operation of the city within the wall. She is expected to do her part to maintain the refuge for the last survivors of the war. She is expected to be a tiny cog in the larger clockwork of the city, but she did not expect to become the city's power supply. For 15 years, Lark Ainsley believed in a lie, and now she must escape the only world she's ever known or face a fate more un unimaginable than death. I just really love Megan Spooner's writing, and I haven't tried anything quite like this before. Most of her other ones are retellings so excited to try it out. Then lastly I got A Peculiar Peril by Jeff Vandermeer and this one is, has like a crazy cover. Jonathan Lamb's head stands to inherit his deceased grandfather's overstuffed mansion, a veritable cabinet of curiosity. Once he and two schoolmates catalog its contents but the three soon discover that the house is filled with far more than just oddities. It holds clues linking to an alternate earth called Aurora where the notorious English occultist Aleister Crowley has seized power on a magic fueled rampage across a looking glass version of Europe. Replete with talking animals and vegetables, swept into encounters with unpredictable allies and murderous enemies. Jonathan pieces together his destiny as a member of a secret society devoted to keeping his world separate from Aurora. I mean, it just sounds wild and fun. Like it has quite a few nature elements and maybe kind of a treasure hunting element while they're searching through these oddities. So sounds really unique. I think this one is adult. And then lastly, we have The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. This is gonna be more of like a rom-com romance. I've heard really good things about it. It's part of a series. It's set in Alaska. It has like a wilderness vibe about it. Plus the cover's amazing. So excited to try it. Okay, you guys. So those are all of the books that I thought would be perfect for Hikathon. A couple of them I'll be getting to for the 
the readathon. I will link any recommendation videos, all the information for Hikeathon, the Hikeathon Spotify playlist, and all of that down below in the description, as well as the graphics to download. So many fun things I have available to make the readathon more immersive. Be sure and follow me on Instagram at the Bright Side Girl if you haven't already, as I will be posting quite a bit on there, and we do a lot of fun things as well. Stay tuned for my Hikeathon TBR. Let me know if you're participating down below in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time on the Bright Side. Thank you.